Welcome back to Let's Roger That, I'm Gilles. In this episode, I'm going to make a countersink grinding fixture based on the designs of Doug Ross, uh, of Ross Botics. Now, uh, Doug has uh, well over 30 years experience in machining and makes wonderful stuff. Uh, so I thought I'd give it a shot and uh, have some fun and see what I could do. So let's make it. the materials and then I'll go to the bench to measure out the various features. Now here the base plate will have two uh, included angles. One will be for 82 degrees and the other one for 90 degrees. Um, so to do the 82 degrees, we need to carve out an angle of 49 degrees. So I'm gonna use my protractor to do that. Now before cutting the angles off of that base plate, I've decided to drill the holes that will let the screws uh, hold down the fixture onto the base plate. It's just easier to indicate that way. Before I drill holes into the fixture part, I thought, well, I better put it to its proper dimensions first and then get the holes ready, put it on the base plate, see if everything fits nice, and then I can move on from there. So that's what I'm doing now. Now that everything is faced off on all sides, it's time to drill the holes. One, of course, for the spindle, which will hold the countersink. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. And then I'll drill the ones on the base and I'll tap them as well. Here I am using my M42 brand new uh, drill bits. Uh, those are 8% cobalt and they are absolutely fantastic. Not cheap well well worth it All right, I finally got that base done. The holes are all done, everything's threaded. So I put it together and it's really important that everything is centered because once you cut your angles on the base plate, if everything is not centered, you got a problem. So just uh, make sure you get that nice and straight. So I guess it's time to cut those angles. Thank you. 
Okay, time to machine that spindle. I've taken what was the remnant of an old spindle that I was working on, and I'm turning it down to fit inside the, uh, the hole that was made into that fixture. Now, as you can see, I've got about an inch and a half or so inside the chuck, and that's gonna remain at that diameter simply because I'm gonna use that as a stop on the other side. You'll see it a little later. So now I'm gonna take uh, a, a scrap piece of 1018 steel and make a knob for that spindle. Yep, fully intended on using my tailstock to guide that tap. Didn't work out that way, but in any case, still uh, worked out. So well, that's good. Now that the spindle is done, uh, I'm gonna fit the cam on it. And you see that little uh, spring-loaded uh, bearing? Well, that's gonna guide the cam, which has a 30 uh, thousandths um, variance around its circumference. So that's what's next. Let's drill a hole. Okay, so here's our sleeve, and as you can see, there was a hole there, so I uh, bored it out uh, just to make sure that it was a nice size, and uh, here are the measurements uh, for it. Now, uh, this is the countersink, and of course, the countersink is not going to fit in that, and those are the measurements for it. Now, so we need to make a sleeve that'll go inside that spindle, and those are the measurements that we need to take into account to make one. Let's do it. As you can see, I've got a center drill and I'm gonna put a 60 degree taper in that thing because I wanna put a live center in order to support that piece. As you'll see later, it's gonna come in handy when I do that knurling part. Now I'm gonna knurl that little knobby part and then I'm gonna cut it off. So don't stretch yourself out, just, you know, feed inwards instead of towards the chuck. A lot easier, a lot safer, no stress. Well, 
often I'll see comments from guys out there and girls uh, that are wondering how do you get successful neural? You know how difficult it is. Quite frankly, there's a little bit of a formula involved. My take on it is one, of course, you gotta use lots of oil, and I go in about 15 to 20 thousands into the piece with my knurling tool. That's it. There's no other secret to it. So as you can see, I'm moving my brush back and forth here, and that's to clear the uh, metal debris that the knurling tool leaves behind. And that way it gives you a really nice, clean knurl. That's the ticket. Okay, so now before I move over to the grinder to uh, make sure that all my parts are really flat, uh, I'm gonna just put a real nice little feature in here, uh, 45 degree angle on both sides of the top of that fixture, just to make it look cool. You guessed it, it's grinding time. I was gonna make sure that that surface is uh, nice and clean and there is no burrs, just make sure everything's flat. That's the whole idea of a surface grinder, just bring the things down to dimension and nice and flat. So that'll help later on when I want to put it back on to the surface grinder to grind my uh, countersink, of course.
Well, I'm really pleased with how things turned out at the surface grinder, but now it's time to put these things together. Sleeves and countersink. And the way these will be held together is with grub screws right there and there. And uh, so now it's time to drill some holes and tap these things for some 832 grub screws. Well, that was a lot of work for one countersink <laughs> that I own. <laughs> but you know what? It's all fine. So it's time to assemble this thing. So here I am putting in that 40 millimeter uh, spring loaded bearing. And, and it fits really nicely and tightly in there. So I don't even have to glue it in. It's, it's going to be great. Uh, now, the next part, of course, is I've got to uh, put the sleeve in there. And as you can see, there I've uh, drilled and tapped the holes uh, for the grub screws. And there is just enough meat to do it. It doesn't have to be super tight uh, in there when I put the little sleeve in there. Now this grub screws goes onto that little retainer sleeve and that's gonna hold the countersink bit in there. Just like that. Okay, so here we are with the main spindle. As you can tell, it's got a, a recessed area or a raised area at the front, and that'll prevent it from going inside the spindle. Now you'll see what it, what it really comes in handy for next. But uh, first of all, of course, we have to put the cam in there, and now the spring uh, with the knob at the back. So the spring will actually push the sleeve uh, backwards, right? And, uh, and that's really what it needs to do. So it pushes that cam against that little bearing. So now uh, the interesting part is that you have to put the countersink in there and put it parallel to the ground, right? That the cutting edge and the cam the lowest part of the cam, which is basically the 30 thousandths of an inch recess, has to be lined up with the cutting edge of the countersink. So the easiest way to do this, you take the cam and you take the recessed area, the helical, helical part, and you lean it against the little bearing. And then once that's done, then you put in the countersink and line up the cutting edge with that. Well, I guess the next part is to see if we can use that fixture and grind away. So as you can see, I've got uh, that locked up so that the uh, saddle doesn't move from side to side. I've put a one, two, three block, lean my 82 degree um, angle against it. And now it's time to rock. And as you can see here, that is going to come in and out. And those are one thousandths of an inch increment. Now I've spared you the part that where I have to creep onto the grinding wheel uh, until the, the uh, countersink touched it. 
Now, that, that took a little bit of time because you've got to be careful when you do this. Now, I've also forgotten that uh, I should have showed you just how badly damaged the tip of that uh, counter sink was. I actually had tried to grind it by hand. You can tell it's all crooked. So it took quite a while um, to get that ground correctly. And, um, but it, it, as you'll see, it works pretty nice. So let's, uh, let's just see it work for a little bit. And as you can tell, it clicks and ends up on the cutting surface. I advance the carriage by one thousandth of an inch. And then I go around uh, to grind the rest of the circumference, which is 270 degrees. Have a little bit of a close up here. Let's see if I can zoom that in so we can actually see clearly and uh, have a peek at how it goes. Now you can see the surface of that countersink is absolutely horrible. I, I butchered that really bad. So, of course, you know, where uh, it used to work, it no longer works now. Here we are with the finished grind. I am stunned and amazed. Uh, it really did a nice job, honestly. It's, uh, I guess the only thing left to do is uh, give it a spin. Let's do a countersink. Unfortunately, my drill press doesn't spin slower than this. Um, but, hey, it still looks real good. I'm pleased with that. So, uh, Doug Ross, you thanks for your design pal and um uh, thanks everybody for watching if you stuck it out this long um i really appreciate your viewership and uh please like and subscribe and uh i hope to see you again in the future take care bye bye